They say that hindsight is 2020, so it is in that spirit that I wanted to create this video in which I speak about things that I know now that I wish that I knew then, specifically around cleaning and pressing. Stay tuned. Reggie here and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. In this video, we are going to talk about hindsight and technically lessons learned. Things that I know now about cleaning and pressing that I wish that I knew back in the day. And the very first thing that I want to talk about is the realization that a clean and a press cannot correct all defects that are present with a comic. And the second part of that is the differences between pressable and non-pressable defects. Again, these are things that I know now that I wish that I knew back then, specifically when it comes to cleaning, not everything can be corrected with a clean using standard methods. And an example of that is foxing. I had no clue what foxing was back in the day. I now know that foxing is basically those brownish yellow spots that you'll see on a comic that are caused by mold. And a standard clean will not remove that defect. There are some advanced techniques out there that can fix potentially foxing, but a standard clean cannot. Again, this was a huge lesson that I had to learn the hard way because I sent in books that had foxing and thought that it would be cleaned off. And sure enough, it was not because I didn't have it treated using some of those advanced techniques that I spoke about before. When it comes to pressing, not all defects that are present can be pressed away. For example, spine ticks or stress lines that they call them now can actually be improved with a press but if you have a stress line or a spine tick that actually breaks color, where you can see the white paper behind the ink, that is not a pressable defect. Again, this is something that I don't know that I fully appreciated when I first started sending books in. And I still get questions now about pressable versus non-pressable defects, uh, foxing, for example, can it be cleaned off, yes or no type of thing. And so I wanted to flag this because it was a lesson learned for me and I think that there are others out there that still will benefit from what I'm talking about right now. There are videos here on the channel that will go into a lot more detail about pressable and non-pressable defects, so I encourage you to check those out. The second thing that I want to highlight, which could sound like a contradiction, but I think that I'll be able to nail it, is that not every book has to be cleaned or pressed, but many books can benefit from a clean and a press, and it depends upon the degree of the effort that is exerted. Now, here's what I mean by this. You could have a brand new book, a book that was just printed, and you could send that book off, and it could come back at a 9.8. Easy breezy. But because of modern printing technology, you could have a brand new book that goes in, that gets a 9.8, that actually has wavy paper. Because of the way that comics are printed now where the ink is applied to the paper and sits on top of the paper, you could have a wavy comic as a result. Some grading companies will give that book a 9.8 because they have allowances for wavy paper because of modern technology. Back in the day, they would apply the ink and the ink would be absorbed into the paper because the paper was much more porous. So you could have a brand new book, wavy, get a 9.8. Personally, that would bother me. Having a wavy book in a perfectly square case would bother me. Maybe it would not bother you. So that's something that you have to think about. The other thing to consider is that even new books can have fingerprints if they were handled at the LCS by the shop owner or by other customers. So some books, even new, could benefit from simply being wiped down. Now, with that said, older books that have been handled, that have maybe been mishandled over the years, certainly can benefit from a clean and press if there is debris, visual dirt, grime on a comic. And I'll talk a little bit more about the benefits of that a little bit later in this video. But not every book has to be cleaned or pressed, but the books can be improved with a clean and a press. 
The third thing that I want to highlight is that cleaning and pressing is an incredibly rewarding experience, especially if you learn to do it yourself. This is an undervalued, underappreciated aspect of the hobby that I personally did not appreciate until a couple of years ago when a few people challenged me to learn how to clean and press. And there is something rewarding about using your own two hands to breathe new life into a comic, being able to remove dirt and debris from that comic and see it come to life is honestly an amazing part of the hobby. And there are some pros and cons to it that I'll talk about a little bit later in this video, but it is another aspect of the hobby that complements the reading, the collecting, the organizing, the sorting, the appreciation for the art. The fourth thing that I want to talk about is a two-parter. It is about patience and pictures. If you are learning to clean and press your books yourself, you need to be patient. And there are videos that are here on the channel that can actually help you with that process. But you need to be patient because there is a little bit of art and science to cleaning and pressing. So you need to be patient, learn the craft, and rest assured that over time, with enough repetitions, you will get it down. The other part is that if you are sending books off to be cleaned and pressed by a third party, and it really doesn't matter that third party, you should be patient because if they are good at what they do, they may have a backlog and they also are going to need to take their time depending upon your book to properly clean and press that comic. The second part of this is pictures. If you are cleaning and pressing your books yourself and you're sending them off to be graded, or, or not, to be honest with you, you want to take before and after pictures. By doing this, it allows you to see the impact that you actually had on that comic because you may not fully appreciate it until you take a step back and actually look at those before and after pictures. The other part of pictures is that if you are sending them off to a third party to be cleaned and pressed and potentially even graded, the before pictures will help you to determine whether that person actually did their job, right? You want to see the impact that their effort had on your book and the money that you spent, right? The other part of it is heaven forbid something goes wrong and your book is lost or your book is damaged, it's important to have some documentation, so take those pictures. The fifth and final point that I want to make here is about impact on appearance. A proper clean and press can have a dramatic impact on the appearance of the comic that you have. And it doesn't matter whether you are keeping that book raw in the collection or sending it off to be graded. A cleaner press can have a huge impact to the degree of a half grade or more in the overall appearance. And I say that the, the or more part is a little bit of a variable because a lot will depend upon the presence of cleanable defects and also pressable and non-pressable defects. And again, there are videos throughout the channel that can help you on various aspects of what we've covered in this video. But with that said, I am going to wrap this video up. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. And if you enjoyed it, I definitely want to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment behind. And if you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care.